we're going to create this ripple effect because you know it wouldn't be my graph without creating some kind of cool animation so we're going to create this really cool ripple effect let me right new project cool right let's do this let's get into it Right, okay, we're going to start off by creating um, that kind of like grid of uh, hexagon shapes. And the way that we do that is we can actually grab a cylinder and then we can adjust our radius. So I, I'm trying to remember, I think I about 5 by 50 we're going to go with. Um, and then the way that we get that like hexagon is just by kind of uh, reducing our rotation segment. So, you know, everything we've done so far, we've increased our segments because we like that nice rounding, that nice smoothing, but we can actually do like the opposite effect to create some like really interesting um, uh, shapes. So if I put um, six rotation segments, we now have these kind of like, it's like hexagon going on. And what I'm going to do just to make it a bit more aesthetically pleasing, I'm going to fill it this and I'm going to do a radius of uh, 0 0.2. So yeah, so all we've done is we grabbed a cylinder, rotation segments at six, and then done a little uh, little fillet on there just to make give it that nice, nice rounding. Right, now let's use the good old cloner. So I'm gonna grab my cloner and I'm gonna drop my cylinder into my cloner. Let's just sort of come out a little bit so we can see what's going on. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a honeycomb array for this, and it's going to give us this really nice um, kind of honeycomb effect when they're all really close together. But what I'm going to do, so at the moment, my um, my orientation is is set to X, Y, uh, but we're going to look um, for like a, a X, Z plane. So I'm going to go um, and select X, Z, and these are now going to be kind of like a flat down. And I'm just going to sort of um, use these yellow handles just to sort of pull these in a little bit closer. And then I'm going to go to my four views. And so that's that little icon up here, little sort of like, um, looks like a bit like a minimize and maximize button. I'm going to click that. And then on my top view, I'm just going to click it again. And this is going to give me like a really nice like top view so I can adjust um, the kind of the position of these clones. So I'm going to use these yellow handles. You can use um, size, width and size height if you want to, if you find that easier. But I'm just going to just going to eyeball it like this. Maybe something like that. And we're going to add a whole load more, don't worry. And we're going to go like that. Cool. Right. It's looking good. And now let's increase these. Let's do 50 by 75. Okay, right, so we have our kind of main cloned hexagon shape plane thing going on. And now let's create the ripple. Okay, right, so the way that we do that is we're gonna grab a plane effector And what we're going to do, we're going to, so 100 is a little bit too much. I'm going to, I'm going to change it to 25 and I'm going to go into my fall off and I'm going to grab a torus field. So we can already see, we can already start to see like the effect sort of taking place. Um, maybe we make this 50. Mm. Let's go 35. I'm gonna do it like in the middle. So we're gonna change so our so our plane effector parameter is y position is 35 centimeters. That's the sort of that's creating this this effect here. And we're using a torus field to you know um, sort of define where this um, effect is happening. Right. So inside my torus field. My thickness, I'm going to change maybe to 25. Um, just, yeah, that's the thickness of my of my torus. And then what we can do, we can adjust the radius 
and I mean you can you can see it taking place sort of now anyway we're going to adjust our radius and we're going to set some keyframes so we went through keyframing last week but we'll, we'll do a little reminder so first things first I'm going to increase my number of frames because 90 isn't that many and because I've got 30 frames per second on my project settings this is only going to be a three second animation and so it's all going to happen a bit too quick so let me um let me try 150 and we'll see what this looks like but all this can be changed uh, later on anyway and what we're going to want to do so I'm going to start off with a radius of zero so I have no effect taking place I'm on frame I'm on frame zero so I'm going to set a keyframe and this little kind of gray button here means that it's kind of keyframe of all, which definitely isn't a word, but so I'm going to set a keyframe and it's gone red. That's now so happens. a word. Huh? That's definitely a word. Keyframeable, keyframeable. is definitely. It sounds like it should be a word, but it, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Um, okay, cool. And then we're going to come to frame 120 and then I'm going to make this. We're going to have to go a bit bigger than 100. So let's keep increasing until basically it's gone entirely. So let's go 290 just so I have a nice round number. And I'm going to set a keyframe again. Right, so let's go back to the start of our timeline and let's give this a playthrough. Okay, so we're getting that initial effect do you know what as well it's not actually completely gone so i'm going to have to just set it to 300 and then reset that keyframe so all i did there was i went back to frame 120 entered a value of 300 and then kind of set a keyframe and what it does is it will just replace the the previous one on that on that frame all right cool so let's play that through again okay cool so we're getting we're getting that initial kind of animation happening. But let's now let's now add some additional effects to this um, this plane effector in this torus field. And we're going to do that by using a couple of modifier layers. So we grab our torus field. Uh, we're going to actually we're going to sorry, I'm totally lied then. We're going to go to our plane effector, which is where our um, torus field is. And then we can use some of these modifier layers and these are going to modify how our kind of our field is taking place and how our animation is happening. So the first one we're going to use is this delay. I'm not going to go through all of them today. We're just going to have a look at um, a couple of them. Um, but I'd recommend having a little look because they can do some really, really interesting and really fun results that kind of just add an extra layer to using MoGraph. OK, so we've added a delay modifier layer and it is above our torus field. And that's an important thing. The um, yeah, the order in which everything happens is is quite key. And I'm going to change this to spring and this is going to create that rippling effect. And so if we come back to the beginning and play this through. I hope everyone can see that it's creating. So the initial kind of torus field is coming out and then the delay is sort of causing like a this spring ripple effect to happen afterwards. And it's a really like it's a really cool effect, considering we've only really just added a delay effector and changed it to spring. We haven't had to worry about animating or adding extra fields or extra effectors. It, um, it has its own kind of like information and properties that, that does that for us. And I'm also going to set a decay. And what a decay does, it kind of just sort of like smooths and slows some of this motion from happening um, after the delay. So now as we play it through, we're now creating this really nice, smooth, rippling animation. Cool. So I'm thinking some like the... The plane effector is nice, but it's looking a little bit too uniform at the moment. And so let's add a bit of like, let's add a bit of variation um, inside our torus field. And the way that we can do that is trust the old random effector. So let's grab the random effector. And everything's going to go a little bit, a little bit crazy. And we're just going to throw in a 
torus field just to kind of see um, the effect that's taking place. And in my parameter, I'm not going to adjust my position, but I'm going to adjust my scale. And I've switched on uniform scale and we'll just do a value of 0.5 perhaps. And then, yeah, let's leave it at that for now. And what we're going to do in my torus field, I'm just going to match the same um, kind of settings that I used before. Or we could just use the same field effect, but let's just set it up again so it's in our so it's in our minds. So back on frame zero, I've got a radius of zero, and this is my torus field on my random effector. And I set a keyframe, then at 120, we know that this needs to be 300 centimeters the same as the other torus field. And now as we play through. Hmm. We're now getting so as as the torus field comes out, we're now getting this sort of slight variation um, on our kind of like hexagon shapes. Okay, so the final kind of step for this. So if we go back to this one, we kind of have two going on. So we have the first one happening, then we have the second one happening. And so what's really fun and really easy about this is we can actually just um, grab our plane effector and random effector with our torus fields in, and we can just duplicate it. So we can hold down our command key and click and drag. And it's going to duplicate um, this exact same setup and so what we can do inside my torus field, I can move my keyframes so it happens a little bit later. So let's just click and hold and let's go 15 frames later and we'll have it end 15 frames later. And we're going to do the same thing on our other torus field. So I'm just going to drag this little keyframe uh, icon here. And there's one other thing we need to do first. So if I go back to my cloner. Inside my effectors tab, we can see we have the plane effector and the random effector. These were the initial ones that we set up. However, it doesn't have our plane one or our random one. And so it's not going to work. Um, so if I play it through, we don't have our secondary um, kind of uh, ripple happening. But what we need to do, we're going to drag our random in and we're going to drag our plane in. And then now as we play through, we now have our second ripple. And what we could even do, we could go into, into here. So you don't have to worry about this, but this is, I'm just going to change the color just so we can see um, the difference. There we go. And so you could add multiple of these. You could you could add even more. Just make sure you drag them into the cloner. And then you could also kind of, if you find that they're a bit too close together, you could just tweak the keyframes on the torus field to um, kind of have a bit of an extra gap in between if you wanted. So let's do that. Let's put that onto 30 and that onto 30 just so we can see what it looks like. Oh, no, I can't get it now. There we go. Cool. 